high school sports fans. Are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. The first day of March, which means it's championship season in the CHSAA, and the CHSAA B crown is on the line as Regis and St. John's Prep take center stage here in Rose Hill for the hardware, trying to go back to the city or in Queens. From Rose Hill Gymnasium, the St. John's Prep Red Storm take on the Regis Owls on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Today's game is sponsored by Massmith Federal Savings Bank. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. Alongside the Hall of Famer, Oliver Antigua, I'm John Perez. And Oliver, this is the best time of the year. Playoff season here in the CHSAA, and you've got St. John's Prep and Regis. It wasn't a long play playoff road, but it was a long season as we take a look at the bracket here. Two different ways to go. St. John's, the Prep, they breeze through the first round of the bracket. Meanwhile, on the other side, Regis, a hardened victory over Sacred Heart. And both of those type of victories can help harden these teams to capture a title here today. Absolutely, and for Regis, close game is great, especially this time of year. Can only prepare you for what should be a great game today. And uh, St. John's Prep playing really well. Guys have to have a lot of confidence. Hopefully that can translate into the city championship battle. Well, Oliver, you're a head coach, and I'll tell you what, you have to have a lot of confidence when you've got two of the best players in the league. And as we look at St. John's Prep, they're loaded with offense, particularly our two impact players today. It's Jacob Gomez and Patrick Roush. Yeah, you're talking about two guys that really have done it uh, for them all year. And uh, it should be a great two, two, uh, two for two matchup here with their, their top two and, and uh, as well as Regis' top two. And, you know, this is a St. John's prep team that only averages around 55 points a game. They supply half of that. With that said, though, um, how does St. John's the prep get a little bit more out of players that have given them everything this year? Well, in a, in a game like today, you know the stars are going to be pumped and ready to go. Uh, you want to kind of like ease your way into offense, maybe take, make, make some simple calls early on, get some easy baskets. And then once you see the ball go in, hopefully some of your role players will knock down some open shots. And that's how you kind of get your team going offensively in a big game like this. All right, so that's the Red Storm. Let's shift over to the Regis Owls. 20 victories in a season only for the second time in school history. The last time they did that was in 2005 when they won the Federation. You said the Stars come out to play in the biggest game of the year. Well, why not the player of the year? And that's going to be Brendan O'Keefe, one of our feature players, as well as Austin Mejia. Yeah, O'Keefe can really fill it up. The stat sheet can score in many ways. He has his Batman and Robin and Mejia as a sidekick. Uh, look for those two guys to get going early and set the pace for Regis. And St. John's Prep says that they know they've got their hands full with O'Keefe. But with that said, though, there's not many games left and not many minutes left in O'Keefe's career. You'd have to imagine with his career on the line, he's going to show out today. Oh, no question about it, man. You know, it's this is what you dream of. You, you, you know, you want to play in the city championship. You work your tail off all year. And you know, you're finally here and it's time to perform. So... I expect a big performance out of him. Well, Oliver, if these teams are going to capture a crown, bring it back to school, what are they going to have to do? Let's take a look at our keys to the game. Well, for St. John's Prep, no forced shots. 
bring the energy, and be ready to adapt defensively are their keys. And meanwhile, on the other side for Regis, hit the open man. This is a Regis team that can shoot it. For sure, you know, uh, good passing, set good screens, get your guys open. Hopefully early on the butterflies settle down, guys see the rim and make shots. And, you know, don't hold anything back. Leave it all on the line. It's the Owls, it's the Red Storm, it's the CHSAA B Championship, and it all starts next on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic. The buzz is palpable. The owls are out. So is the mascot. It's a Friday night in the Bronx. No better place to be. Alongside Oliver Antigua, I'm John Perez. And Oliver, you've been in this championship game. What are these players and coaches going through right now? Yeah, right now a little bit of butterflies, some nerves, you know, which is normal, understandable. Once the ball gets up, though, everything calms down and the noise kind of blacks out. And then it's just about the in-between the lines, guarding your guy, running your offense, you know, playing the way you've played. You practice six months of the year to get to this moment. So don't do anything different. Follow your coach's lead. Run your plays. Take good shots and play good defense. If you do that, you have a chance to win at the end. One of the interesting things, too, is that these two teams play in different style gyms and that Regis is a small band box and St. John's Prep has a little bit of a bigger gym, especially for a B-school. There's only so much practice time you have when you get to Fordham, though. But what are some of the emotions that the players are going through playing in a bigger gym? It looks like the entire student body is here for Regis, and now you've got the college atmosphere. Uh, I can't imagine what it's like to be uh, a 16-year-old again looking for that trophy. Well, the high school court's only 40 feet long. and Oh, 84 feet, sorry. And the, and the college court's 94 feet. So There's a 10-feet difference. So you got more spacing. You got to, you know, kids get tired quicker. So you really want the first few minutes to really everybody settle in and catch their second wind. 
and hopefully that'll allow them to play better. Well, there's the starting five for St. John's Prep, and there's only one player that is not in the starting lineup from the championship runner-up season two years ago, but we mentioned Jacob Rouse, uh, Jacob Gomez and Patrick Rouse, Dylan Pargan, Jalen Hernandez, and Ryan Edwards, the super sophomore transfer coming in from Virginia. Headline, the starting five for St. John's Prep, led by John Kiggins in his sixth season, graduate of St. Mary's in 2012. He said that it was a huge learning experience losing in the championship game two years ago and says he's grown a lot as a coach and as a program and looks to bring it back to Astoria today. There is Regis. Win number 21 would bring home a title. And they're going to be led by the player of the year, Brendan O'Keefe. You've got James Delgadio, who is finally healthy, Austin Mejia, Alex Seppi, and John Duffin. And you know what? Nobody is 100% healthy at this time of the year, but for your Regis, you've got James Delgadio back. You've got to be feeling good, Oliver. Absolutely. You know, just another guy that could help out in scoring and rebounding and defense. And, you know, somebody's going to have to have a good night from the role players. And usually if you get a good night performance from somebody you don't expect, it's usually a success, formula for success. A little bit of a veteran advantage for Regis. They've got 10 seniors on the roster. They're led by Kevin Cullen in his 23rd season. He is the coach of the year. And there he is in the middle of the huddle. And we'll talk about the different storylines throughout the night. But for Regis, you have to be feeling pretty good, especially you've got the player of the year. You've got that veteran leadership. And let's be honest with you, too. A Regis man, there's a certain character out there, too. They've gone through uh, different types of struggles out there and always a resilient bunch. So Coach Cullen, a little St. Raymond's alum, shout out to the coach and coach of the year. Congratulations. Senior veteran team, got to like that. They've been tested and... Hopefully you can see them getting going early on and making some easy plays and getting everybody involved. 20-4, and 11-1 in the CHSAAB. A two-point victory over Sacred Heart. There is St. John's Prep. They lost to Cathedral up in Monroe Community College. That was the first year back from the pandemic for the CHSAA, and the Red Storm just didn't have enough of an answer for... Miles Turner, who is in attendance today, now playing at John Jay. He was a star for Cathedral that night, as it was Cathedral winning, and now St. John's Prep trying to win their first title since 2005. And as we get ready here, I mean, Oliver, you can't think of a better atmosphere than Fordham Prep, and I know that it felt like the world ended a couple of years ago when there was no uh, championship game or even just the resumption of the playoffs, but it just feels right to be back here at Fordham. Well, the calendar's turned March, my friend. You know what that means. We're in March Madness, and we get to tip it off here on Varsity Media, the BCHSA title game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oren Barfield is the crew chief, as it's Dylan Rouse and Alex Seppi for the opening tip, and the Red Storm win it. And we'll bring it up the floor by Jacob Gomez, an all-league selection in the CHSAA Bay. It looks like Regis come out a little zone, John start the game. And look for different looks for Regis. They're going to try and upset Rouse and throw different boxes and zones and everything as Rouse can't can the first floater and the rebound corral by Alex Seppi. Had a great look there. Just a little bit long. Good sign they'll get the ball in there early. Meanwhile, defensively for St. John's Prep, they're more of a man-to-man -man defense and we'll see how they go at O'Keefe as well as J.J. Duffin who just gives it off well, to James Delgadio. Really, really pre aggressive pressure. Up and under Seppi, and we get a quick foul. And that'll go to Dylan Pargan, the 6'3 senior from Queens. And that's something that Alex Seppi has worked on in the offseason, Oliver, is those up and under moves to create some separation. And he got it with the head fake last time as he cans his first free throw. It's always interesting to see the student sections behind or in front of their own shooters as he goes one for two at the free throw line. And Regis has packed it out, at least on the far side, underneath the basket, and the St. John's Prep crew is behind their own bench. Regis out in the three twos matchup zone, giving them a different look. Pargan tees up a three off the heel, and one and done go the Red Storm. Duffin snapped up the head to O'Connell. And check that O'Keefe, I apologize. O'Keefe, the senior from New Rochelle. Three ball, no good. Seppi. 
And the fight for the rebound, that's Ryan Edwards, the transfer from Virginia. Flipped up ahead to Hernandez. Rouse spots up from three, short. The big fella keeping the ball above his head. We like to see that. And now here's uh, Regis coming up and setting up offense. High post, Seppi. Nice backdoor cut to the basket, but he has got his first deuce of the night. Love to see that. Great execution. Uh, using their aggressive defense against them. Nice backdoor play. Kevin Cullen says he's the most athletic player on the floor and moves so well without the basketball and was on full display early on in the first quarter. Edwards thought about it and flips over to Pargan. Gomez. Hernandez dials it up. Short again, and the lids have not opened up for the Red Storm early on. Could be a good strategy. Big court, make them, make them shoot from the deep. Don't get anything going early, so we'll see how this plays out. Duffin, 1v1 with Pargan. Nice cut. Mejia fouled on the way up. And Austin will shoot two. So it looks like Regis is going to feature him in the post. And because you had guys cutting to the basket, that shows me that they look for that option. And the big, obviously, has some good passing skills because he hit the cutter right away for the foul. First free throw for Mejia. As that gives Regis a 3-0 lead. And... Austin Mejia out of Wayne, New Jersey. His favorite player, Russell Westbrook. Favorite shoe, the WOW 808 Ultra. And how about this? The best game that he's ever watched. The 2024 seniors versus the faculty. And <laughs> you got to love that. Have you participated in those games? Yeah, I hurt myself a couple times. As you get older, you can't play too many turkey bowls. <laughs> so a little three-quarter court extension back into the zone. Again, making them take tough shots. And for St. John's prep, they just, it's either been an air ball or way short, and they haven't adjusted yet. And we get a foul away from the shot, as that'll go to John Duff in his first. Rouse did a nice job of getting to the weak side, trying to get some offensive rebounds, which is available in the zone. You've got to send guys, because if you're not making them, it could be a long night for you to score. Rouse, the 6'6 junior, averaging 14.1 points a game. What an offseason for him. Put on 15 pounds of muscle and really worked on his three-point shot. Trying to give the Red Storm a point and still can't do so. Little nerves out here. You know, it's a few minutes into the first quarter. I think you'll see people settle down here. Both teams had some free throws. It's good to see one or two go in. And then hopefully uh, their confidence grows from there. Check out Rouse is getting to know. Dinner with the three celebrities. I understand the first two if you're into that world. <laughs> Bringing Ellen to Elon and Billy that's Gates. A, that's a throwback. Hey, that's a throwback. There you go. I know that Ellen is your first guest, Oliver, but the other two, I don't know how it meshes, but hey, it's his uh, answer. Here's O'Keefe. Curls around. O'Keefe was calling for her. With some space, a three. Short. Hernandez with the cleanup. If you're St. John's prep, you want to try to push the ball a little bit and get beat the zone down the floor so you don't have to depend on your half-court zone offense every time down. Hernandez, he lets it fly. Short again. And Duffin using that 6-7 frame to box out and collect the rebound. Duffin already two rebounds in the first quarter. Nice cut to the basket. If you don't stop the ball early, Mejia can kill you all game long. So really aggressive, great move to the basket. Mejia is shooting 53% from the field, and he gives Regis a 7-1 lead. Almost halfway home in the first quarter. Yeah, they got to figure out the zones. Give him a little trouble, John. Gomez, a three against the zone. Hernandez still can't find the bottom of the cup. Offensive rebound, it's Pargan. Floater, high off the window, no good. Fight for position, offensive foul, the push called against Red Storm. What a great environment for these kids. The student section is in, into it, engaged, you know, really supporting these kids. Uh, they, they really work hard all year long. Nice to see them get the chance to showcase on the biggest stage here at Fordham University. I think the best part is there's no school tomorrow. It's Friday night. This is the beginning of the night. There they are in full force. And, you know, that's the interesting thing about the Regis student body is it's not just a bunch of city kids. They're coming from all over. And we'll talk about it 
throughout the uh, game. But, for instance, Seppi comes from Queens. O'Keefe is from New Rochelle. And then you've got uh, Jude Morrison from Garrison, for example. It's a melting pot. When you got one of the best academic institutions, you're going you're gonna to acquire talent from all over. That's for sure. The best tuition, too. Free 99. <laughs> That's right. I couldn't get in, so I had to go to St. Raymond's instead. You and me, brother. Here's a little one, two, two, three quarter. Falling back into the zone. St. John's another three off the mark. Pargan. And a little frustration after the miss, too. Outlet up ahead, skips through Duffin. And the Red Storm take over. If I'm St. John's right now, I'm calming down, talking to my team about trying to move the ball, get the defense to close down, try to penetrate the zone. You're getting open threes because that's what they want you to shoot, and they're not really going in right now, so they're playing into their hands. They try to drive the gaps there, ball faking, maybe try to get it inside the 20. Timmy Richardson checks in for the first time for the Red Storm, wearing four in red. There's another three in the corner, Hernandez, and finally the Red Storm dial one in. That, as a coach, you just take a deep breath. Finally one went in for you, you know what I mean? Now, now you can relax. <laughs> and as much as St. John's was struggling, Oliver, they were still only down six. Yeah, right in this game. It's a lot of basketball. Early on, teams will settle down. Kick out, Duffin, extra pass, Seppi. With 14, he'll bring it back out and hand off to Duffin. Deep three, O'Keefe, bottoms. He shot that from Mount Vernon there, John. The senior from Westchester shooting 41% from downtown, and that, the Owls go up six. That was impressive range. How much confidence does that give you to see the first one go in, and especially when it's a 30-footer? Oh, forget about it. The, the, the hoop looks like a, 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 a pool to you. When, once, once that first one goes in, look at that. O'Keefe goes for a swim, denied. Gomez turns it over. O'Keefe, right place, right time. Pump fake and a bucket. Five early points for O'Keefe. Hey, how about that two-man game there? Those two know each other, man. He finally got a steal. Mahir didn't give up on the play. Great pass and finish. Look at his hands. Pass deflected again. Gotta love the wingspan of this Regis zone. O'Keefe to the basket. Bank shot, no good. Fresh 35 for Regis. Duffin three, not that time. Boy, that looked good coming off his hands, like he made some of those before. I was joking with Kevin Cullen during the week that if we asked him about 30 years ago, your six, seven guys open for a three and you want him to shoot, he'd say, you're crazy, I'll never see basketball going that way. Coach has evolved, he's old school, so I like to hear that. Moving on with the times. I think it also helps too that you've got a guy in Duffin that can knock it down. Yeah, that looked pretty good, so I can see him taking that. Drive to the basket, Mejia, not that time. And then a bump afterward as Gomez goes right into the chest of Seppi. Boy, Mejia's got a quick first step, doesn't he? Just blew right by his defender. Everything but the finish. And you mentioned Mejia, an all-league selection, two-sport athlete as well, played his first three years uh, playing both basketball and volleyball, so he's got... Probably some of the best hops on the team. Yeah, you can see right away he's got a quick first step, and it looks like he's right on cue and locked in to have a big game today. Hasn't been the best quarter for St. John's as they try and carve into this deficit, and Gomez off on the runner. And will stay with the Red Storm. Two-second differential. They're getting good looks, man. It's just one of those things that, you know, it feels like there's a lid on the hoop and nothing goes in. I've been there before. It's one of those, you just shake your head as a coach, you know. Somebody's got to get something going to the basket. Or, draw, or try to draw a foul. Rouse settles for the three. Knocks it in. Or do that. That'll help tremendously for your confidence. Four of the seven points came from Patrick Rouse. And now with the shot clock turned off, reaches a hold for one. O'Keefe with five points early on off the screen. Up top, good ball fake. Delgadio. Mejia, a three, short, raises the rim. Now six seconds, St. John's looks to push. Here's Gomez with two seconds, floater, short. And that does it for the first quarter. The Regis Owls coming to play and flying to a 12-7 lead over St. John's Prep. We'll take a break here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. This is Jalen Brunson, you're watching Varsity Media.
is Jalen Brunson, you're watching Varsity Media. Thank you very much, Jalen. As we take a look into the Regis huddle, there's Kevin Cullen, former Raven great, looking for the title here in his 23rd season. And you have to be pretty satisfied with what he saw in the first quarter, Oliver. Yeah, for sure. You look it up and your two best players are your leading scorers. O'Keefe with five and Mejia with six. If you're a coach, you got to like that. Setting the stand, setting the table. And, uh, you know, if you're St. John's prep, you got to figure out a way to stop those two guys. Well, the one thing for St. John's Prep is they settled for a lot of shots the first four minutes and then started to drive to the basket, didn't get as many foul calls. I'd imagine that that's the message, or what would the message be out of John Kiggins? Yeah, you know, if I'm talking to my team right now and, and I say, fellas, listen, we got to push it up the court, beat the zone, try to attack the gaps, maybe try to drive it. Don't just settle for long threes. If they're there and you're open, it's a good shot, take it. But let's try to get some short twos going first. St. John's prep, 2 of 10 from 3 in that first quarter. Floater, O'Keefe banks it in. Such a pretty move. Got by his defender, under control, off the one leg, called the glass. O'Keefe with half of the Owls' output. He's got 7 of the 14. Now it's back into the zone. They haven't figured it out yet. It's giving them a lot of trouble. Pargan steps into a 3. Can't groove it in. Rouse a fight for the rebound, and there's Richardson. And those lids are still closed as Timmy Richardson couldn't knock it in. This looks like it's one of those days. Nothing's going in for St. John's prep today. We were talking a little bit about this off camera, but St. John's prep is getting good shots. It's not like uh, they're taking bad shots. Just not dropping. Mejia, lefty layup, and scoops it in. Pretty move by Austin Mejia. He's got six. I tell you, I am a fan of this kid. He looks like he's on skates out there. I shortchanged him in the first quarter. He also played soccer his first two years <laughs> as well. Well, you could tell his lateral quickness, athleticism is showing out right now. Lateral quickness seems to be the terms, right, over the last couple of weeks. Patrick <laughs> Rouse, high off the window, no good. Yes. And a tug, O'Keefe and Richardson, as O'Keefe just slams Richardson out of the way. Yeah, there's a coach in Queens that we're talking about that after one of the games. He didn't have enough players with lateral quickness. But I'll tell you what, if you think that that's the most unenjoyable year of your life, but it sparks two straight victories, I don't think many people care what Rick Pitino says to spark his team. Hall of Famer, master at it, knows to get most out of his kids. You know, playing the best now is what they want. That Big East is right around the corner. The city's going to be rocking. Well, on the micro level, St. John's Prep looking to get some hardware, and there's Jacob Gomez. Nice drive baseline. And instead of taking the three, he put pressure on the defense, drove baseline, and got to the basket. And that's how you get back in this game. Gomez only took two shots in the first quarter. That was by design for Regis. Missed them both. Nice job on skates as Caleb Garudi, the sophomore, finishes. He got a steal here, tucked it in. This could be a danger zone here for St. John's Prep. You gotta be careful. Largest lead of the night for Regis. They're up nine. Step back jumper, O'Keefe. No, sir. Delgadio fight for the rebound. And the last touched it. And the Red Storm take over. I thought that was going in. That looked pretty coming out of his hands. Nice step back. He got separation. And uh, Regis has a nice, comfortable lead right now. Big part of that was they went 4 of 11 from the field. They held St. John's just 2 of 14 shooting, and they get in the passing lane. Who else, Mejia? Eurostep, bank it in. Yep, we got to talk. We got to talk, St. John's prep. Great timeout. Great timeout. Set you guys down. It's all working for the Owls right now. Let's take another look. It's been Austin Mejia's half, Oliver. What a strong move. Took a Euro step away from the defense, went up strong, and finished it with the finger roll. This winter, Varsity Media is proud to announce our partnership with Gipper, the number one social media content creation platform for athletic programs. Coming with thousands of the best social media sports graphic templates, social media automation, AI-powered one-click background removal, 
mobile app for easy content creation on the go. Learn more today by visiting www.gipper.com. 20 to 9 the score. Friday night party for Regis. As they have figured out this St. John's defense and they've been in fourth gear from the jump. So if you watch what happens on main baskets, Coach Cullen is putting those guys in a 1 2 2 3 quarter, slow them down, eat the shot clock. As they cross over now, now they fall back into the zone, and now they got to try to make sure that the offense has to whip the ball around and try to find some open gaps. So working to perfection. St. John's Prep has to make shots if they want to get him out of that zone. Patrick Rouse trying to make shots. Kevin Cullen and his defensive scheme doing a good job of frustrating Rouse and only holding him to four points so far. One of five shooting as Jacob Gomez brings it into the front court. Yeah, he's got to get going. He needs to help Rouse a little bit and maybe try to be a little more aggressive on the offensive end. Gets picked up by Mejia. This is a three in the corner flush. That goes to Julian Estevez. He was the MVP of the JV squad last year, called up as a junior, and is averaging five points a game. Now that's a big shot because it stops the run here, and it gives a little bit of confidence that they can make it. So that's a good sign for St. John's Prep. Caleb Garudi, a sophomore. Snapped inside, and the mismatch, but a blown layup. Seppi. What a gorgeous pass. You hate to see the kid miss that. He doesn't miss too many of those, shooting 51% from the field. High floater, no good, Edwards. Coach setting up his offense. O'Keefe lets it fly. Short. And last touch by Regis, and the Red Storm take over. I like the aggressiveness. You know, they're going to try to put pressure on St. John's Prep. I, I like that my guys attack it, for sure. Estevez to Rouse. Rudy draws the assignment. Flipped up top. Estevez another three. No, sir. You know, they're only giving them one and done opportunities. They're not getting second chances. So good job by Regis on the defensive backboard. O'Keefe in the driver's seat and running the show. Mejia and Seppi thrown into a tight window. Up and under Delgadio. Can't finish. They're running good stuff, good action. You know, you got to give Fugis a lot of credit. You want to try to get to that middle and then play from there. See that 21's open? Got to get it to him and then let him face up and face the basket. There you go. Face the basket. Pargan? Mm. Not that time. Good, good look, though. Playing zone is tough, man. You got to make shots. Got to make shots against it. Or else they're going to stay in it all game long. And it's a complete team effort as well. For sure. You got to get to open areas. You got to drive it and create shots for somebody else. Edwards on the face guard, but it's been Mejia's half. It's a three, Delgadio, yes sir. Rare trip of Delgadio, who was dealing with an ankle injury all year long, and knocks it in, and Regis with its largest lead of 11. The answer back, Edwards, Banks, still open, Oliver. Yeah, I don't know, ATM, drive through what that was, but uh, we'll take it, we'll take it. 6.23 p.m., and you're right. Still trying to deposit, and there is O'Keefe. A drive to the line. I'll tell you what, that was a pretty split. They tried to trap him on the ball screen. He was shifty. He split it, got into the middle, and made the defense foul. Great heads up play by O'Keefe. Well, as the player of the year goes to the line, let's get to know a little bit about Brendan O'Keefe, the senior from New Rochelle's favorite player, Peyton Pritchard, Kyrie Low Twos. This might go up there for one of the best NBA games of the last decade, if not century. Game seven, the 2016 finals on the Cavs. One at all of the game. You gotta love it. I feel like that's one of those games you remember where you were when it happened. And I just remember jumping out of my couch on the LeBron block. Yeah, amazing. One of the best games ever. One more for O'Keefe. He splits the pair. Seven points. Check that. Eight points for O'Keefe. Here's the 1-2-2 two, two extended D. 
making them eat some clock up. By the time they get settled, they got 25 to work with now. Right on cue, Edwards lets it fly off the heel. And that's, and that's the trick, you know. The Home run pass, O'Keefe catches in double coverage and pulls it back out. He's just a heady player. Here's another cerebral player. Mejia, O'Keefe, three, short. And a foul afterwards on the push. The last shot by St. John's was from the NBA three. And if you do that, you're helping out the defense. They're giving you that option. That's You're open for a reason. Don't take that shot. Take a step in, drive it, kick it, move the ball around. That shot will be there at the end of the shot clock. But not. you don't want that in 20 seconds. Well, the game plan was pretty simple for Kevin Cullen. And he's got no problem letting St. John's prep shoot it from three. And I guess, Oliver, as a coach, you tip your cap if St. John's was making the threes. But... They're just simply not. Yeah, good job. They're you know playing with uh, playing active hands and making it tough for them to see and you know fall away. No good. Richardson, the six-two senior, can't dial it in. Seppi looking for his first points off the mark. Good closeout contest there by the defense. There's Jalen Hernandez to Rouse. Thought about hoisting. Lost the handle. Goes right into the hands of Gomez. Boy, they just can't get a basket. Third opportunity for Rouse. Not there. And Mejia comes out of the dust. Takes on two defenders and a foul on the floor. Great looks from St. John's Prep. Just nothing is going down for them right now. No go to Timmy Richardson. His first. The team's second. Theo Ewart, the transfer from Midwood Academy, comes on to shore up the defense for St. John's. Mejia, the drive, and rolls it in. Pretty move, bodies under control, using his strength, finishing at the rim. He only averages 14 points a game, and... He's at 10 right now as we're under a minute to play in the opening half. Gomez, wild shot. Wild pair of shots. And there's Mejia to clean it up for his fifth rebound of the half. Garudi, good ball movement. Mejia, why not? Not that time. And the shot clock turned off, but O'Keefe lets it go. Bingo, another O'Keefe three. What a great kick out, offensive rebound. It's the best time to shoot a three in and out. O'Keefe with a pretty stroke and all net. The Chancer MVP for the player of the year. Why not? Drive to the basket, Edwards is fouled on the way up. And that's a great sign because you don't want to settle for jumpers. The one time Rouse drove baseline, got something good. This time, uh, Edwards gets in the middle, attacks the zone, gets to the foul line. Want to see, need to see more of that in the second half. How much momentum does it carry into the locker room if St. John's Prep can hit a few free throws here and keep Regis off the board the final 7.3? Oh, it's huge. It's huge, you know. Right now, you're fighting like hell just to stay in this game, and it's tough. Great environment. You know, nothing's going in. You can say to yourself, look, we didn't play great. We missed a ton of shots. We're still in this game, guys. Let's calm down. Stay what we've been doing all year. Trust the process. And hopefully you guys start making some shots in the second half. Well, the quick tag and a foul against Prep. That'll be the third personal foul on Jacob Gomez. And his first half really coming to an end in a nightmarish fashion. Five point nine seconds for Regis. They have to go the length of the floor. Into O'Keefe, snapped up ahead, out of bounds, and the Red Storm take over. Two seconds here, no fouls. Just make them keep everybody in front of you. Hopefully, you go into the locker room with a nice halftime lead. You are to trigger it into the backcourt to Hernandez, and the Red Storm don't get the shot off. They'll go into the half with Regis 
leading 29-15 in the CHSAA B final here from Fordham University. It's been a fun one. Second half coming up next on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Hey parents, how about a bobblehead for your athlete? Bobbleheads are one of the most preferred personalized gift items today, and it's so easy to order. All you need is a photo of your athlete, a model number from our extensive collection of bobbleheads, and the sculpting process begins. Two proofs are sent for your approval, and once it's approved, in a few weeks, your bobblehead is on the way. It's that simple. Order your bobblehead today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs, or call 516-403. 2050. Varsity Media is offering a video folder that you can customize to meet your needs. A photo of your athlete can be elegantly placed in the front panel. Essential statistics with a biography can be printed on the inside panel, and videos can be downloaded and viewed on an LCD screen for as long as two hours. The attractive video folder can be placed on a coffee table and instantly becomes a conversation starter. Order your video folder today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs or give us a call at 516-403-2050. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect a proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. When it comes to advertising, are you hitting the right audience? Why waste your time with television or a free print publication that's given out at a local deli? Varsity Media has your back. With a following of over 50,000 and a local demographic ranging between the ages of 18 and 54 years old, it's time to get that return on investment. Plus, here's the best part. Your ad lives forever on our YouTube page. And with a large on-demand audience, it's a grand slam to advertise with Varsity Media. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network.
Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Hey, sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Hey, parents, how about a bobblehead for your athlete? Bobbleheads are one of the most preferred personalized gift items today, and it's so easy to order. All you need is a photo of your athlete, a model number from our extensive collection of bobbleheads, and the sculpting process begins. Two proofs are sent for your approval, and once it's approved, in a few weeks, your bobblehead is on the way. It's that simple. Order your bobblehead today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs or call 516 403 2050. Varsity Media is offering a video folder that you can customize to meet your needs. A photo of your athlete can be elegantly placed in the front panel. Essential statistics with a biography can be printed on the inside panel, and videos can be downloaded and viewed on an LCD screen for as long as two hours. The attractive video folder can be placed on a coffee table and instantly becomes a conversation starter. Order your video folder today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs or give us a call at 516-403-2050. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect them proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. When it comes to advertising, are you hitting the right audience? Why waste your time with television or a free print publication that's given out at a local deli? Varsity Media has your back. With a following of over 50,000 and a local demographic ranging between the ages of 18 and 54 years old, it's time to get that return on investment. Plus, here's the best part. Your ad lives forever on our YouTube page. And with a large on-demand audience, it's a grand slam to advertise with Varsity Media. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Welcome you back for the start of the second half. Al Nation out in full force, and it's been all smiles as Regis has a 29-15 lead over St. John's Prep in the CHSAA B Finals. Alongside Oliver Antigua, I'm John Perez, and Oliver, I'm going to have you get your scalpel ready and get all your precision skills in order as we look at the numbers for the first half. And from the outside, it was pro Regis, but as a coach, how do you dissect this? Well, the first that you see is uh, 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 Regis, 11 for 25 from the field, shooting at a pretty decent clip. And uh, St. John's against the zone, not really hitting from the outside, 5 for 29. You know, you, that's got to change or else it's going to be a long night for St. John's prep. Well, for St. John's prep, that 5 of 29 is 17%. And conversely, for Regis, 
You're looking at 44% clip. One thing that we were talking about off air too, really came down to the rebounding battle. So you'll see 2020 and think, okay, well, it's pretty even, but that's not the case. And there's been a disparity on the offensive and defensive class. Yeah, for sure. And St. John's is getting opportunities to score and they're just not putting them in. And you gotta, you gotta make those baskets. You're close to the rim. And a big reason that Regis is up, points in the paint. 16 for Regis and only two for St. John's Prep. So a lot of those offensive rebound opportunities are just not dropping for them. Yeah, for Regis, they were led by a 12-point effort by Austin Mejia. He really had a good stretch, had four unanswered points in one spurt. Meanwhile, on the other side, the player of the year, Brendan O'Keefe, had 11 total points as O'Keefe headlined the all-league team. He was the player of the year. And there you see St. John's Prep representation from Jacob Gomez as well as Patrick Rouse, but a good team all around. And then on the other end, Kevin Cully, the coach of the year. So congratulations to the entire league. And Oliver, it's definitely one goal for these players is to win that individual award to get some recognition. Absolutely, and right now, if I'm coaching a lock I'm in, the, in the huddle, I'm saying, fellas, keep doing what we're doing. We're playing great defense. Keep sharing the basketball, running our stuff. We're getting great looks. Don't change anything. Just two more quarters and we're city champs. Kevin Cullen looking for the title. First time since the pandemic as Regis sitting pretty with a 14 point lead, 29-15. And meanwhile on the other side for St. John's Prep looking for their first title since 2005 when they were still in the A, but uh, even then, that snapped a long streak where the previous one before 2005 was 1950. So this is a St. John's prep team that has not had the opportunity to win a lot, and it would mean a lot for the program over at Astoria. And as we get ready to go for the start of the second half, and St. John's prep. One thing of note, Jacob Gomez picked up three fouls in the first half, number 30 in red, so we'll keep an eye on him. And... Oliver, how does that change things schematically, especially for Regis? Yeah, you got to, well, Regis, you want to go at him, be aggressive, try to get his fourth because he's a key cog in their offense. And for and for him, can't, you know, can't be super aggressive. You got to be smart. Don't want to pick up a quick four, four foul. Brendan O'Keefe will start it off for Regis. A little 1-3-1 one, one matchup zone. Meanwhile, Seppi was held to just one point in the first half, but did a good job on the glass. Mejia, not enough English. Ball trickles out of bounds, and the Red Storm take over. Great start, first stop. Coach comes out in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. I like it. They went to halftime. said, all right, fellas, let's change this up a little bit. Give them a different look, and first possession, they get the stop. A little bit of a stoppage here as you're ready for the inbound. And St. John's Prep trailing by 14. This is a team that lost to Cathedral just a few years ago at Monroe. Floater, Edwards off the mark. Great outlet pass. And Mejia with the finish from Seppi. Tic-tac-toe go the Owls. And they lead by 16 early in the second half. That started with Seppi getting the defensive board and getting a quick outlet. Lids are closed on the other end for St. John's Prep. Here's O'Keefe. Nothing's going in, John. J.J. Duffin squirted away. Rouse to the deck. O'Keefe with Gomez. Who wants it more? What a hustle. Great job. Leaving it all on the line. Love to see that effort as a coach. That's what you work for. It's a championship effort on both ends. This place is buzzing, John. Everyone's seeing the effort. They're loving it. A lot on the line right here. Just look at this. Oliver, this has got to fire you up as a coach to see players laying it all out. Diving on the ball, you know, getting rug burns, don't care. You know, got to, got to secure the possession. Meanwhile, St. John's Prep has to secure a bucket, and then they commit a foul. And that'll go to Gomez. It's his fourth. Wow, that's a huge, huge foul. Got to take him out of the game now. Can't, can't risk it. It's too valuable. Somebody else is going to have to step up for St. John's Prep if they want to get back in this game. Yeah, as Gomez goes to the bench and a dejected Jacob Gomez. This is not what he had in his vision board coming into this game. Duff into three. Not that time. 
And a whistle afterwards. Pargan comes together with Mejia. Yeah, See the frustration settling in. Yeah, sure. Stuck his hand in there. Just, you, want, you want him to get back on defense. Don't commit that foul 90 feet from the basket. One more sub for Regis as Caleb Garudi, the sophomore, came on. I thought Garudi had a good first half, number 10 in white for Regis. Uh, did a good job getting in the passing lane. He didn't show up in the stat sheet, but did a very good job defensively in the zone. And you see his length with his hands. Make, that's why they're having a tough time scoring. He's long, and he's, uh, he, he covers a lot of area. 6'2", only a sophomore, seen as a 3 and D guy for Regis now, but the ceiling is his potential as... Edwards couldn't get it to fall. I tell you, Seppi is going to finish with 15 rebounds today. Love this way he kids goes after it. Oh, he's almost there. He's got six. Let's find underneath. O'Keefe. There's the zone out of St. John's Prep. O'Keefe, good ball fake, lets it fly. Can't connect. Offensive rebound, Garudi, and he puts it back in. 70% of missed shots come off from the opposite end. You got to get to that weak side rebound. And he was fortunate enough to be at the right place at the right time. Garudi, four points, three rebounds, and a couple of assists. As Pargan snaps it over to Hernandez. Edwards, corner three, not that time. Good look, good shot, just not dropping for him. Great pass. Yeah, and there's Garudi again. Six points for Garudi as he contributed defensively in the first half and showing out offensively in half number two. A 20-point lead for Regis. And as a coach, you love to see your big guy rebound but also pass it. What a skill set Seppi has. Very impressive today. We'll try again. Hernandez, too strong. And another one-and-done possession for St. John's Prep. Delgadio resets. Four and a half to play, third quarter. Keith to Garudi and now Duffin. Five to shoot. The ball trickles out of bounds. We'll say with Regis, three to hoist. That was a good defensive possession. They guard the entire shot clock. They move their feet. Nothing easy. Here's three seconds. You want to really guard here. Nothing at the rim. From the wing, Duffin denied. Rouse with one second. It's a shot clock violation. Great stop. St. John's prep. Hey, one stop at a time. That's what you got to tell you to. One stop at a time. We gotta come down the floor. We gotta get a good shot, try to get to the foul line. John Kiggins with a team that consists of six seniors, nine juniors. There's no reason to believe that they can't be here next year and for the upcoming years. Let's flip underneath. Hey. There's Edwards, and he'll drive and go to the back, uh, go to the foul line. They they drove the gap there. Passed it inside the zone and got a good positive result. So two good possessions in a row for St. John. See if they get back in this game. Edwards, a sophomore. Grew up in New York, moved to Virginia, and now moved back to New York. So he transfers into St. John's prep. I mean, John, nothing is going in for these guys. No. And as a coach, it has to be a helpless feeling. Yeah, as a coach, there's nothing you could do. I mean, you could try to find somebody else, but these are your guys all year. You know, you know what they give you. And just uh, it's tough when it doesn't go for you. It's not easy. We'll keep across the timeline with under four minutes to play. Keith eyes on the prize, has his pocket picked. Hernandez. Edwards running the floor. He's fouled on the way up. Well, Edwards trying to spark his team back into it. Gets back to the charity strike. 
Great defensive stop, got a steal, kicked it out to transition. Edwards goes strong to the basket. Nice finish. Get yourself a, a chance to make two free throws there. That's how you want to attack the basket right there. First personal on Garuti. That's Regis' third of the quarter. Yeah, if I'm Coach Kiggins, I'm like, that, that had to go in. There we go. Finally, one falls for St. John's Prep. Looking to hit them both. Two, one two of two. Strong. Too strong. Seppi overshoots O'Keefe. And a rare miscue between those two. Yeah, they're talking it over right now. You like to see that. It's a great sign of leadership. Let's get it figured out and get down to the next possession. Regis takes a full timeout, and we'll take it with them as well. 3.32 to play in the third quarter. You're watching the CHSAA B Championship on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Hey, sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcers' storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Regis with a huge 35-16 lead over St. John's Prep. Here in the CHSAA, the final as we take a look at that huddle. And with that said, Oliver, we look in that huddle, and everyone dreams about these moments in the preseason or even in the summer. Well, for Regis, what they were able to do, they were led by Brendan O'Keefe, the player of the year. He, along with Alex Seppi and Austin Mejia, would all commute to school every day, get there at 7 a.m. just to put up shots. You can see it's really paying off, and because of those three players doing so, then it was a full team workout, and, you know, this is O'Keefe coming from New Rochelle, Mejia from Wayne, New Jersey, Seppi from Queens. Uh, you got Jude Morrison from Garrison. The commitment for Regis has been there since last year, and it's coming out to play tonight. And you can tell, and we call that culture. You know, you set the culture up, and your players do that, and this is the, this is the result of it. Drive to the basket, Del Gaudio, not that time. Kick out, three, Edwards, flush. Boy, did St. John's prep need that. Absolutely, great timing. They're playing hard, they're fighting for their team, and uh, it's good to see one of those drop here. Maybe you get a couple of shots going in a row, get a little, get a little run, a little 5 -oh, 6 -oh run, like a mini run. You know, you can't, you can't get the whole score back on one time. You guys do little by little, little bites, little bites. Well, there's a little foul underneath. If I'm St. John's prep, I'm trying to cut this deficit in the next 240 to get me to within 10 points. You got to get a few stops in a row and a couple of baskets. And if you do that, going into the fourth quarter, you give yourself a chance to get back in this game. Triple off the heel by Seppi. St. John's in fourth gear. Rouse has got to get going. And they get it to Estevez, and he'll go to the free throw line, and it oh. doesn't curl in. God, you can't. you got to be kidding me. The rim, unkind in the Bronx from the visitors from Queens. Unbelievable. I mean, Oliver, how does this not go down? I have no idea. No clue. What else can you do? I mean, a great move, got fouled, got it on the rim, soft touch, and it just goes around and around. Misses the free throw to boot, and it's been a frustrating night for that crew. I've been there, man. I've been there. Sometimes it just doesn't go down for you. One of them days. Mama said there'd be days like this. Redeems himself on the second. 15-point lead for Regis and a press from St. John's Prep. They could just get a couple stops in a row. Like that. Seppi the drive and kick out the blocking foul. That'll go against Richardson, his second. 
Good call by the veteran official, Barfield. Longtime great CHSAA ref. Getting a chance to call this one. Now one of two Orrin Barfields officiating uh, high school sports. His son playing at Archbishop Malloy, played a couple years at John Jay, and now is following in his father's footsteps. Mejia off the mark on the running layup. Mustard is short. And a tie up. We'll send it down to the other end. And Al's Nation letting him hear it. What a great turnout by the region's student body. They are engaged, they're loud, just making a cool experience all around. You know what I mean? And Oliver, too. I mean, as a former student athlete, it's these four years that you remember for your lifetime. That's and right. even if they're not playing, they'll still remember this night. And how about O'Keefe punctuates it with a layup? He's got a Baker's dozen, and Regis goes up 17. Back to the zone. Got to move the ball around the perimeter. There you go. Attack it from there. Estevez slips. Edwards, the layup. He's got six. That time they found the, the, the gap in between the, the forwards, and he was able to finish going right at the top. Seppi drive to the basket. Happy feet. A turnover. A rare demerit against Regis. Up to this point, they've played a clean game. Here's Estevez, slips past one defender, loose ball. Richardson the drive, too strong, Rouse, floater short. Pepe with the wall up, making it tough, didn't foul. And just nothing goes easy today. Nothing easy. Seppi, not that time. And now with 40 seconds to go in the third. Edwards denied. Dufflin a flex and a block. Great, great timing. Edwards the poke. Hernandez. Back to Edwards. Prep needs this. And why? Edwards is finding his groove a little bit, giving him a chance of life here. Chipping away. Gotta love the fight here, Oliver. Well, the shot fake breakdown, great extra pass, draws the contact, stays under control, and finishes it off the glass. The sophomore stepping up big in a big game. Missed it again. Shot clock turned off, and Regis a hold for one. Frustration foul on Rouse as Patrick picks up his third. So while it's only the team's fourth, Regis to trigger it in. With 13 seconds to play in the third, and I gotta think O'Keefe is gonna get this final shot here if I'm Regis, coach. Here's Duffin. Miscommunication. They tried to give it to O'Keefe. Still has it. How about this? Duffin, scoop, reverse layup, Seppi the bucket. Just the way we draw it up, right? <laughs> It's all breaking right for Regis. They're eight minutes away from a CHSAA B title. And we'll have it for you coming up next on the Varsity Media Sports Network. CHSAA Heart and Sun, you're watching Varsity Media.
Breaking it down on a Friday night and perhaps some future Regis students in there as well. And the memories, not just for the high school student section, but of course alum and future students as it's been the night of the owl here. And Oliver, you got to love when a plan comes into motion and Regis has just executed all night. And they're eight minutes away from winning a city title. Yeah, playing a great game. I mean, sharing the basketball, not really turning the ball over, getting good shots. And, I mean, to give up only 24 points in three quarters is pretty impressive. So kudos to them. And uh, eight minutes away, like I said, for getting to that promised land. To be the first beat title for Regis since the 2018-19 season. And for Kevin Cullen, coach of the year in his 23rd season. Says it would mean a lot to the senior class that had to deal with coming back from COVID and gelling together and a lot on the line for that crew and led by the player of the year, Brendan O'Keefe. He's had 13 points tonight. Now, Oliver, we don't have a vote, but you could cast your vote either for O'Keefe or Mejia for Regis and what they've been able to do. Absolutely, and you wouldn't be wrong either way. I mean, both are having great games. Here's Duffin, he'll try a three. At that time, Seppi fighting for the offensive rebound. And the guys are getting to the ground, you gotta love it. You know, they're hustling, they're busting their chops, just trying to do whatever they can to help their team win. Dylan Pargan returns, and one point of note for St. John's Prep is that they played a majority of the third quarter without Jacob Gomez, who picked up four fouls. One of our impact players, he's back out there to start the fourth. So they were Regis. And sometimes foul trouble is part of the game, and that's why you need a bench and you need a team to some guys step up, you know, next man up mentality. So this is now and never for him. I'm sure he's going to try to be aggressive and make up for that time he spent on the bench. O'Keefe, another deep three. Not that time. Gomez slithering in, skirts baseline. Pargan, take it away. Here's O'Keefe for the exclamation point. Brandon O'Keefe can't lay it in. And you got to give a lot of credit to Edwards, who hustled back, didn't give up on a play, challenged it, and made him make him miss an easy layup otherwise. Rouse returns for Timmy Richardson. Catch and shoot, mid-range jumper. Duffin can't put it in. Another opportunity. Here's Delgadio, not that time. Hernandez fires it quickly up ahead. Gets it back to Gomez. Deflected and Regis picks it up. Don't have to force it if you're Regis. Take good shots. Make them play defense. You got control of the game. Just make them guard you. Reaching foul called against Edwards. Ryan Edwards picks up his first and the team's first of the quarter. Oliver, you hit on the point before about other players stepping up in absences. And Regis had to go through that this year, too. Two of their best players were out for an extended period of time. James Delgadio dealt with an ankle injury and then a stress fracture in the back of J.J. Duffin. But you know what? The Owls went 6-1 and one in that stretch. And some battle testing for them as well. Blocking foul on the Rouse drive. And that's the sign of a good team. You're going to face a little adversity during the season. Can you uh, withstand that, that period when you guys are out? and hope to rely on some other guys on the team to step up and go to your bench. So uh, Regis, man, just really playing well on all, all levels of the game right now. Edwards almost overshoots Gomez. Gomez head fake, Pargan. Rouse, top of the key three, not that time. And this game for St. John's Prep will be the game of missed threes. 
Hargan. Finally. And you could see him get emotional like, man, I just need to make one, you know? And that's that's the kind of night it's been for tonight for St. John's Prep. Red Storm call a quick 30-second timeout. And Oliver, you can get the sense for Regis that this has been building over the last few years and a program that's trying to win a title. As you take a look at the last couple of years losing in the semifinals and first round. But around the pandemic, they were right there, last bait. Yeah, and um, you know what? There's no look, no time like the present, and they can if they get this win. It'll be huge for their their program and their alumni and their fan, parents and fans of these kids that really worked hard this year. And it's a, it's a special time of year. It's a special time of year. The 2018-19 team losing in the Federation final. Kevin Cullen now trying to win a city title. Five forty-six to go in the fourth quarter. O'Keefe and a push. If this is against Gomez. His night is done. Yeah, I think it is. And that's going to do it. We'll check that. Lauren Barfield signaled number 20, Patrick Rouse. And because of that accounting error, it's going to go to Rouse, who didn't have the push. And so St. John's Prep's going to get away with it. Yeah, coach is giving him an earful right now on the sideline. Flipped underneath the tie-up. And the Red Storm take over. You know, if they can get a score here and just get it to 10, there's still enough time, John, for them to get back in this ball game. Big possession here. Catch and shoot three. Edwards, bingo. Huge three. Don't look now, St. John's, but you're only down nine with five minutes to go. Here's O'Keefe into the front court, flipped up ahead. Duffin throws it away. So you're saying there's a chance, John. You're saying there's a chance. Yes, you have. That's what they're saying, trying to rally on their team. It hasn't been their night so far, but that's why you play four quarters. And just like that, a long night of misses can change really quickly if you find a hot guy, and Edwards is having a hell of a quarter. Gomez is given second life. A corner three off the heel. Edwards, the offensive rebound and a whistle. Oh, it's a tough call. He loved the effort, but he pushed on the back, going the other way with it. That's going to be Edwards' second and the team's third. John, only a sophomore. Sky's the, the limit for him. He's playing great. I mean, he's active. He's, he's making shots. He's all over the place. you got to like to see that for the future of St. John's prep. You hear so many professional teams talk about a big free agent signing. Well, how about a transfer coming in out of state, especially at the high school level in Class B? And that's what Edwards has been as he transferred from Great public school in Virginia. Great addition to the team. Lefty layup, that's good. Alex Seppi runs so well without the basketball. And that's how you stop a run. You run your offense, you get the ball close to the basket, high percentage shot. Gomez, the drive inside, no good. Rouse fighting for the offensive rebound. Gomez denied, but he'll go to the free throw line. You gotta love it, man. They're giving it all. They're laying it all on the line. They know it's do or die time now, and you can see it by their effort. Let's take another look, Oliver, as St. John's Prep not going down without a fight. See, they missed the shot, but Rouse keeps it alive and, and be, was able to get the foul. And, uh, Gomez. Got to make these free throws now. Everyone counts. Well, here is Jacob Gomez, favorite player. Allen Iverson. How about this? Actor to play him in a biopic. Pete Davidson. Saturday Night Live. Popular guy. Off the mark there. I'm going to foul afterwards. So a double whammy. 
Missed free throw and then a foul against Jalen Hernandez. Gomez goes for the steal. It's a two on one. Drive to the basket, Seppi. Too strong and Delgadio cleans it up. Way to pick up the trash. Don't give up on the play. Delgadio finishes, puts it back in. Gives him a little cushion. It's been the high flying Owls. And how about Alex Seppi to Delgadio. And Regis up 13 with 4.06 to go. Well, we've got a lot cooking on the Varsity Media Sports Network, particularly this weekend. I mean, look at this. Right after this game, 8 o'clock tonight, Monsignor McClancy takes on Fordham Prep, and then the quarterfinal Sunday punctuated. How about this for a quarterfinal matchup? Many people thought this would be a finals matchup at the beginning of the year, but Christ the King and Archbishop Stepanak and Cardinal Hayes takes on St. Francis Prep, followed by Iona Prep and first-year head coach Tim Philp against your St. Raymond Ravens, the defending New York AA Archdiocesan champions. And then, of course, it's all capped off with Monsignor Scanlon and Nazareth. We'll get the NSCHSAA championship Tuesday night out on Long Island, and then we're right back here at Fordham on Wednesday, March 6th. It's the best time of the year, Oliver. Oh, my God, I'm talking about the next game. Can't wait to see it. We're going to be here all night. May have to hit all the half for some coffee and some uh, some some dessert after this one. Well, you got the hookup. I think there's a bat signal out there that you and uh, the rest of these Hall of Fame Bronx guys have. So I'm surprised yep. we don't have the uh, red carpet out yet. Rigoletto's was my favorite after winning a chip to make sure we go get a team dinner afterwards. Or to have one of the best. Regis back in that zone, trying to slow down this little mini run they're on. Flecked it off the fingertips of Gomez. Catch and shoot Rouse from the free throw line, too strong. And O'Keefe cleans it up. If St. John's is going to get back in this game, Rouse has to make shots for them. Just There's nowhere, there's nowhere else around it. And he's the guy that's capable. And right now, just not, not going down for him. Reverse the play and the Red Storm take over. And here's Timmy Richardson in what could be his final game in his Red Storm career. Fire it back in for St. John's. Now the clock's against you, John. You can't really run offense that takes 30, 40 seconds. You've got to come down and do some quick hitters and try to put points on the board fast. A real sh the game's over. Time is not your friend. Here's Gomez. Richardson lets it fly off the bench. No good. I think it starts to feel Regis really taking the air out of the basketball. Here's Garudi. And now to O'Keefe with 13 points, six rebounds and an assist for Regis. Long three, short. Fresh 35, another three. Yes, sir. Caleb had his feet set and let that thing go. He knew he was making that. What a pretty stroke. The Rudy only a sophomore with nine points. Rouse the other way, in and out. That's a great day at the office for a sophomore. Got some good young ones out here, John. No, and there's no reason to believe that these two teams won't see each other again late in the playoffs next year. And Well, two well-coached teams, a lot of uh, unselfish basketball, and pretty move. How about Garuti? Uh, back he's to had back. streaks these games. Yeah, and four unanswered points. Kids got talent. Rouse lost the handle as he was going up. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. And you love to see young kids in a big game like this really come out and have success because they're really uh, – 
just gives them all kind of confidence. You're at the biggest stage. You know, you worked hard all year. Get to play in front of your family and friends. And have a game like that as a sophomore is going to be uh, something he'll never forget. You can only imagine the expectations, too, that he'll have for himself as he gets older. And now the league is on notice. And they know what they're going to get out of Caleb Garudi. He'll be a marked man as a junior. As Garudi will go to the bench in a nice ovation. Great Garudi. minutes off the bench by the sophomore. One more for Rouse. 6'6", junior, and John Kiggins was saying that he could see player of the year potential in Rouse next year. No question about it. You know, tonight's not his night, but you can tell he's skilled. He's got great athletic ability. And hopefully this will motivate him to get back in the gym and come back much stronger next year. Seppi gets the bucket. Seven points, 15 rebounds, so you hit it right away as Gomez gets the floater. One of the things as a coach, those are winning plays. And you go to the stat sheet, you know a guy's getting after it. He's doing all the little things for you. You know, rebounding is hard. It's physical. you got to go after the basket. And that's how you win games. And you look it up, they're all doing a great job. Well, we have a break in the action. 124 left in the fourth. There you see St. John's prep. And I know it's not going to be the banner finish, but they harden themselves to get to this point. Uh, losing to McClancy, St. Anthony's, who is the number two seed in the Long Island portion of the bracket. Port Washington's fighting for a Triple A championship tomorrow. We'll have that on Varsity Media Pass. And then losing to Fordham Prep. It's not going to be the finish that St. John's Prep thought that they would have. But Oliver, in a long season, it's the journey along the way. And St. John's Prep put themselves in a position to have a special year thanks to that out-of-conference schedule. And look, they got two juniors and a sophomore that I can tell you right now are going to be much better next year. So if I'm them, I'm not hanging my hat. I'm just saying, hey, look. We ran into a better team, a veteran team. Let's get back to work and make sure we improve and try to get back here next year. How about Seppi, the lay-in? What a game he's having. Nine, nine and 15, three assists. We call that a stat sheet stuffer. Triple falls for Pargan. Well, Seppi might tell his grandchildren he had a double-double in the city final. <laughs> he's just got to get one more free throw. He can still get there. And there's Pargan and Mejia. Locking together. Now, the one issue with Pargan this year is he's an energy guy, and sometimes that comes back to burn him. And you can just see the frustration for St. John's Prep. And with under a minute to go, Regis starting to sense it. And a title within their grasp. But he cans the first free throw. I'll tell you, he was great early on, being aggressive. O'Keefe kind of took over in the middle part of it, and Seppi just exploded on us. And those three guys had their imprint all over this game. Well, when you're getting up at the crack of dawn and putting up shots at 7 o'clock in the morning, you dream for moments like this, and Regis has that. As Rouse hits a three, and St. John's prep with one more timeout. One more chance to collect their thoughts. And it's a quick full timeout for St. John's Prep, but. Either way, here is the last time that St. John's Prep won. It was 2005, it'll be a little bit longer, but let's go in the way back machine. Uh, how about this, price of gas. Oliver, come on. 188, I'll sign me up for it. Were you an office guy? No, not an office guy. Oh, you're killing me. You had me up. I, I, I was, I'm Mariah I was, Carey, though. I'm like Mariah Carey. All right. All right, some common ground. Million Dollar Baby was all right. I mean, it won Best Picture, but. It's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, I was all swooned. Dylan talked you up so much. And then <laughs> you're not an office guy. Not an office guy. I'm a Game of Thrones guy, actually. Okay. A little more recent. Yeah. A little more characters. They threw that kid out the window, and I was done. <laughs> that was it. That was it for me. 50 seconds away from Regis capturing the city title. Got to love it. Got to love it. Especially they've come out in full force, executed a game plan, and their stars came out to play. 
Nice steal. Jalen Hernandez playing till the final bucket. They're still fighting. They haven't quit, so you'd love to see that. Home run pass up ahead to O'Keefe. Can't save it. And it'll be Red Storm basketball. Final 30 seconds, one last gasp. A three for Rouse. Too strong. Edwards denied. O'Keefe comes up with it and has to get out of the pack. And then is fouled. And now window dressing time for Regis. Well, only the second time in program history that Regis has won 20 games in a season. The last time they did so, they won a federation title. And now, a city title in 23-24. As the player of the year, Brendan O'Keefe, showing out on a Friday night in the Bronx, and during winning time, looking for points number 14. And he's got it. Rouse to Edwards, Gomez underneath, and he lays it in. As Regis fires it up the floor. This should do it. The celebration is on. The Owls win a city title here at Fordham. Regis, the Kings of New York City, a 56-44 final. No greater feeling than knowing that you've accomplished what you set out at the beginning of the year and you end your last game with a city championship. Nothing like a New York City Catholic title. Congratulations to Coach Cullen and the Regis basketball team on a great victory today. Well, and they were led by Austin Mejia, 16 points. He had six rebounds and three assists. Brendan O'Keefe, 15.7 rebounds and an assist. And Alex Seppi. You can make an argument for any one of those players being player of the game. Seppi, one point shy of a double-double, nine points, 15 rebounds, and three assists in a winning effort for Regis. And, and to me, all those guys are MVPs because they each affected the game at a different time. Some were early, some were later, but all important as this you know, game went on and they took control of it. They're singing the... Regis fight song, and we'll send it down to them. Thank you. 
from St. Patrick, Senior Gavin Paulson. From Fort Prep, Senior Matthew Pepper. From the Clancy Senior Carlos Urena. From Salesian Sophomore Julian Wiggins. From Xavier Senior Brian Rudolph. From the South Senior Chase Solano. From the senior federal senior Kenneth Lyra. And from the senior federal junior Antonio. And ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 CHSA game, eight division, most valuable player for Florida Prep Grand Senior, Ryan Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a nice round of applause for the CHSA game, the division, all the main team members. Congratulations to all of the deserving student athletes, and we have a lot to do. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to run the Big Division Championship Awards. We will do this individually. First up, St. John's Prep Bristol. Number zero, Ryan Edwards. Number one, Jalen Hernandez. Number two, Number 25, Blake 
For a long celebration, the title is going back to Regis. I'm joined by the player of the game and player of the year, Brendan O'Keefe. 16 points, seven rebounds in Brendan. Your coach talked about you and the rest of your teammates getting to school at seven o'clock every morning and putting up shots. Now that you've won a championship, what's the feeling? It's amazing. I mean, we built a culture all year where everyone bought in um, and we had guys commuting an hour, two hours to get in the gym every morning. It's a special culture, and it's great that it ended up like this, obviously, yes. Yeah. When it comes to this game in particular, how were you guys able to have success? We really just emphasized playing with joy. Uh, we played our best all year when we were all playing together, playing for each other. Um, so like, we were happy, we were, we were, we were loose, and uh, playing with joy, that was really our key today. We knew we, were, we could handle all the basketball stuff, but if we came in here, we played as hard as we could, and we played with joy, we knew we were going to take care of business. You're a senior going to West Point. What are the memories you're going to have playing basketball for Regis? This, obviously, uh, beating Xavier and Fordham in the, in the, in, uh, in the same year for, for the first time in 20 years. Um, honestly, this entire season has been amazing. 
the culture we created. These are my best friends, and we just won a championship. I'm never going to forget this. I'll let you go celebrate with them. Congratulations. Thank you. That's Brendan O'Keefe as we get ready for the start of the second game. That'll say it all, and that'll do it for our coverage. Our executive producer, Ben Turchin, for Ron Pierre and Travis Eloise giving you the moving images. Our technical director, Chris Sweeney, and my partner, Oliver Antigua. This is John Perez saying so long from Fordham. There's been a presentation of the CHSAA B Championship on the Varsity Media Sports Network.